Hello and welcome to Neo House in Frankfurt. I'm Ben Collins and over the years I've driven almost every kind of car on the planet, from Le Mans races to Hollywood car chases. I even hid behind this helmet driving the latest and greatest cars on TV. But when it comes to everyday heroes, nothing provides the design, performance and practicality of the station wagon. From daily drives to family vacations, fast blasts and epic escapes. The station wagon is like the Swiss army knife of the car world. And now there's a new one. This is the Neo ET5 Touring, the latest all-electric creation by Neo. And being a station wagon, it's packed with life-enhancing features, which is another way of saying it's made for real people in the real world. But it's not just been developed for real people, it's been developed with real people on real-life adventures. And today, we're going to meet some of them and find out how the ET5 Touring fits into their worlds. From breathtaking Nordic landscapes to the busy streets of Shanghai, our journey takes us across six different countries on two continents, Starting in Scandinavia, we're about to find out what the ET5 Touring looks like through a photographer's lens. Any good car or brand in general already encompasses the story. If the car designer have nailed it, it makes my life a lot easier because I can just build on top of that. My name is Oscar Backe. In essence, photography, it's about telling a story. And by doing so, you need to understand the company and the products that you're shooting. From there, I start building a first idea around location or a style and so on. And once it's done, it kind of gets more technical when you start shooting. As you spend time looking at the car, you start to appreciate every small element like the frameless doors or the smooth door handles. As a photographer, it's my job to find this design, to show the shapes and to tell the story. The ET5 Touring has a timeless design. From the silhouette to the details, those Touring proportions just feel right. It strikes a fine balance between practicality and sportiness. For me, it's about that first gut feel or emotion when I see the car. That's the important thing and then I try to reverse engineer that feeling into an image. So for instance, like looking at this car and this majestic rear end of it, it just looks complete. And what are the best angles to capture that in one single frame? Light is one of the most creative aspects of automotive photography. There's so many reflections, materials, textures, and angles that all interact with light. So a lot of my planning is around finding the best lights or producing artificial light to fit with and enhance the car's design. I'm a real sucker for wagons. They were an integral part growing up in Sweden, especially as an active kid who loved skiing. As I've gotten older, I still throw skis in the back and as often as I can, we were hitting the slopes on the weekends. And for work, obviously I need something that can easily take all my camera gear. I always try to find the unique character or identity of a product or a brand. For this car, I feel like just the whole wide taillight is such a statement. Together with a little spoiler on top that kind of completes the silhouette. And I think just the watchtower of this car is such a unique feature. And what I love with it is just reminds me of the roof scoop on top of a race car. Drones are such a great way to find new angles. Cars like the Touring look super cool from above. And you also get a new, interesting perspective of everything around the car. In a way, what I'm actually doing is interpreting and translating all of the work and decisions that went into making this amazing physical thing. And the output, in my case, is an image that hopefully tells and enhances that very same story. A car will show its best sides in its natural environment and tying it all back to the dark storytelling. What could be better than an epic journey or adventure through the, the breathtaking nature of Norway? Isn't this the perfect car for that? 
Spending all of this time looking at a car through the viewfinder and later in Photoshop, you really come to appreciate how much thought goes into great car design. The car is an artwork. Are my images art too? I guess that's in the eye of the beholder. Studying scenes, fantastic photography, and how cool does that car look against that backdrop? I was just looking at the tyres. Did you take it for a cheeky drive? Gotta try out the Sport Plus. <laughs> the tyres tell the story. Anyway, great job. Of course, there's a big team of people at NEO to make sure that the cars all look great, and now I'm joined by one of the designers, Guillaume, to tell us how he did it. And what is it that makes a great estate car, or tour, or shooting break? I don't know what you, what you choose to call it. At NEO, we call it touring, because it's our most daring and dynamic product. And at the end, every product that we design, we do it with around four design principles, which are called pure, human, progressive, and sophisticated. So the pure aspect on that car is especially, first, the silhouette. So you can see we made it as clean as possible, as pure as possible. And then after, a touring for us is two things. It's the perfect combination between beauty and function. So that's why we really extended at the rear of the car, so you have way more luggage capacity. And after, we wrapped all the surfaces around the cabin to give something way more bold and daring. And after, it's mainly all the work that we did here, especially with this, you see this voluptuous area. So when you look in real perspective like this, it gives so much power to the car. Then for us, aero is really important, you know, especially for a touring car because it's way bigger. So, we developed different features for it, but I have to say my favorite one is the spoiler that we developed with the Aero team. So you can see it has a really unique design with these two diagonal lines pointing to the camera. And if you notice, you have just a little depression here, and then this is improving the drag coefficient of the car. So it's super subtle, but it's creating downforce as well, and it's more efficient through the air. Exactly. Yeah, it's great. I also love this brake light, this blade. It's a really vivid color, it looks yeah. different. Yeah, so we have this super slim signature, really recognizable for Neo, and we call it the Illumi blade. So it has this strong red, which is really unique for the brand. And as you see, it's wrapping and going really well to the fender, so it makes something way more uh, coherent. So another big feature in the profile is the, the wheels. It's actually quite a big part of the car, isn't it? Yeah, for us, the rim are really a sophisticated part because when you look at the profile of a car, at the end, it's 20% of the car, just the rim design. So I would say it's kind of the shoes of the car. So this one was developed by the team to fit with this elegant uh, feeling of the car. So I can see we decided to do a multi-spoke rim, so we call it the silver crystal rim. So you have like these different spoke which are done with a technique called diamond cut. So you really see this really technical uh, treatment which is really giving something elegant to the car. The other thing I noticed about this was the technology when I was driving around the car park, very tight spaces, and you've got this watchtower with these cameras very on high, and you get this incredible bird's eye view, and it, it really narrows it down right down to the centimeter. You can get really good clarity with that. Yeah, exactly. You really see these three little features on the top. So you have two cameras and the LiDAR, and as you said, we call it the watchtower. And they are positioned as high on the car because it has the best um, visibility on your surroundings. So at the end, it's also improving the safety for our passengers. Of course, the first thing you probably notice when you see any car is the color, isn't it? I mean, and this one is, is beautiful, so I know you put a lot of energy into that. Yeah, the team developed 10 colors for this car. So um, the Colin team decided to show this color, which is called the Stratosphere Blue. So um, this color, we are a team which is really inspired by the sky. And this one coming directly for the stratosphere. So the stratosphere is the second layer in the atmosphere. And it's where you have the most pure air. And you have only this color there. So this is why we call it like this. And at the end, for me, it's the best color to fit our brand motto, Blue Sky Coming. Fantastic, Guillaume. Thanks for explaining it all. It looks beautiful. So we've explored the car from the outside, but what's life like on the inside? To answer that, we're going to Sweden, country renowned for interior design that blends elegance with intelligence. And who's better to explore a living space than someone that creates them for a living? Architect and designer Christina Look has been exploring how the ET5 Touring feels like a home from home.
There are several important principles of interior design, including function, scale, materiality, lighting, and details. I think all of these principles translate into cars. There are definitely similarities between the design of homes and the design of car interiors. The goal is to make an appealing environment for the occupants, whether they are in their living room or in the driving seat. But then, of course, living rooms don't come with steering wheels. I find car design fascinating. A car is basically a moving piece of architecture. It has to be dynamic and safe, yet comfortable and functional for people. Creating an ambience is important in a living space, or any space where you have to spend a lot of time. And a warm ambience is often achieved with natural materials and soft lighting. Looking at the ET5 Touring, the interior is composed of seamless lines and sleek materials. And when I sit inside, the cocoon seating design fully envelops the body and does make you feel safe and relaxed. I think light is the soul of a space. It should enhance the environment. In any spatial design, we have to consider the quality of light during both day and night. It is an integral part of our work. In daytime, we often want to maximize natural light, which is exactly what the ET5 Touring does with its glass roof. By night, we can play with artificial light, which can completely transform the look and feel of a space. This is just as effective in architecture as in automotive design. Neo really understands the importance of light. The ambient lighting inside the ET5 Touring creates a very special mood. Technology can improve comfort and efficiency in a living space, but it has to be carefully integrated. It should be effortless. Sustainability is very important to me. It is our duty to be aware of and try to reduce the environmental cost of our actions and existence. It's great to see that this is also a priority for NEO. The use of recycled materials reduces the car's impact on our world and reduces waste. Ergonomics is essential in furniture design, whether it's a sofa or a car seat. We are designing something shaped for the human body. Comfort is a key consideration in a piece of furniture. After all, you can spend a long time sat in a chair or a car seat. We sit in our cars for many hours on long journeys, so the seats and the layout should be as comfortable as in our living room. Interior design is all about people. Ultimately, a space or a car only has values when it's being used and appreciated. Christina, thank you for the great insights. Welcome back to Neo House here in Frankfurt, which you might have noticed isn't like any other car dealership. From the light fixings to the furniture, this place feels much more like a living room than a showroom. And with me is Neo's lead interior designer, Philip. Philip, we saw what Christina made of the interior cabin, but can you talk us through what you had in mind when you were designing it? Well, I think you just said it yourself, uh, second living space. And I think the second living room is something that's very important for our interior design at Neo in general and just had a chat with Christina before that about design and architecture, so naturally we draw a lot of inspiration from people just like her. But in regards to the interior of the ET5 Touring, uh, the particular living room we had in mind was one that we called your favorite place. And what we mean by that is that we look at the favorite bars, the favorite restaurants of our users, and try to create the same experience. So we look at these places, we look how do they work at the space, how do they organize the space, how do they use light to create a certain mood, a certain ambience. And then what you try is to get that exact same feeling inside of our cars. So a place you can relax, enjoy. You're obviously a big fan of glass. There's glass everywhere. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I think uh, light is a big thing for us in interior design at NEO as well. And this light can be artificial, like ambient light, but it can also be natural. And what we try to do here is to get as much light as we can into the cabin, so it makes it feel more spacious, it makes it feel more open and light. And therefore, we fitted this really big glass roof on top, which is actually best in class. And as we are near, we also fitted it with a little bit of tech. So that is our intelligent glass roof dimming that we can see here. And what that means is that if you're in a very hot environment, very sunny environment, the glass can adapt. So very hot, very sunny, glass gets a little bit darker, gets a little bit more opaque. So you get even better protection from the sun as well. You can see that because it's practically black in this really high light environment. So obviously working well. Yeah. So 
Um, Christina was talking about sustainability in her film, and is that a consideration for you when you were choosing materials for the car? I mean, yeah, sustainability as an electric brand obviously at the core of what we do. And we have a few very nice sustainable materials inside the, the interior. But there's one in particular I would like to mention, which is the fabric you can see on the door panel. And first of all, we use it here actually to cover a speaker that's inside. There we again, we take inspiration from consumer electronics, from product design. But what's cool about the fabric is it's actually 100% recycled from PET bottles. And in every interior of an ET5 Touring, we're using around 100 bottles that are recycled. Fantastic. Yeah. So where you guys really earn your keep as well is the colour combinations of the interior. And um, so how did you go about that? And what options are there when you buy your car? So in total, we have uh, six colour colors available for the ET5 Touring. Um, and as you remember, Guillaume told me the exterior colors, they are inspired by the sky. Our interior colors, they are inspired by the earth. So we got always very nice earthy tones, I would say. And the one you see here is cool gray. Superb. All right, I think I've got a pretty good feeling for the interior, but I think what we need to do is put a passenger in there, or a driver. So do we have any volunteers to come and sit in the hot chair? You'd like to, yeah, do you want to come on? In you go. Try it out for size. That's a good fit, you look comfortable. I am you look very pretty relaxed. So, and there's loads of buttons here. Can you talk us through, you know, what you can do with the chair and how you can adjust it? I have to reference Guillaume again. You remember he talked about human, and I think the human aspect of our design DNA, I think it's even more relevant in the interior. So what we try to do is to provide our users a very comfortable and a very joyful journey. So we have 12 ways adjustable seats, we have ventilation, we have heating, we have massage, we have even heating on the second row. And in do you fact, need heating? <laughs> no, you're all right. For there's now, massage though, see if you can find the massage button. All right. In fact, the seat's so comfortable, there is this German group of people, the AGR, German Association of Back Health, and they think the seat is outstanding comfort. That sounds serious. Well, what did they say? They say, das ist sehr gut. The ultimate verdict. So what can you do? Um, are there any other creature comforts in this car that I should be aware of? I think there's one you would like particularly, and that's in the center console. We have a smart fragrance diffuser. So you have three small cartridges underneath the console. You can find out yourself maybe later. And what happens is you choose one from the from the, from the screen, and then these get diffused into your into ventilation sen, uh, system and create a really nice scent inside the interior. That's really clever, because my old car actually dropped a curry into the ventilation system, and whenever I turn the ignition on, I got a waft of vindaloo. So it's a little bit unpleasant. Um, but you look really comfortable in there, um, so you've obviously done a great job with the interior design, so congratulations. Thank you. So now it's time to talk about practicality. How does the ET5 Touring handle everyday adventure? And to answer that, we're off on a trip to a well-known tropical surfing destination, Denmark. <laughs> Valeska Schneider. Surfing is my job, but also my life. I also founded my own surfboard company. As much as I love traditional surfing, I also love kite surfing. It's actually my favorite hobby. If the conditions are not really good for surfing, they can be great for kiting. For surfing, we need good waves, but for kiting, we need good wind. Here on the north coast of Denmark, there's usually a lot of wind. I love going into the ocean with a kite. You can use the wind to ride out to the waves and then catch a wave and ride it back to the shore. It's also really fun to do really high jumps. You feel a little weightless and definitely get an adrenaline rush. It's a super fun feeling. The sport of surfing requires a lot of equipment, so I need a super practical vehicle to carry everything. I have different surfboards for different conditions. I also need leash and fins and wax, and then I have three kites and a kite directional surfboard, a twin tip, a harness, a pump and a bar. For both sports, I need wetsuits in different thicknesses depending on the water temperature. Today it's actually pretty cold. I have to travel a lot for surf trips and competitions. With all the gear, it's a real hustle to travel by plane or by train. So I actually often drive instead. And that means a lot of long road trips. With surfing, conditions can change quickly, depending on the waves, the tide and the wind. I need to move quickly to find the best brakes. The car gives me the freedom to do this. It doesn't matter if I kite or surf, being in the water all day is super exhausting and it's great to have a comfortable, relaxing drive home. 
I spend a lot of time in the car, perhaps more than out on the waves. As a surfer, you're really close with nature and a healthy ocean is essential for a healthy world. Surfers are really conscious about the environment and take positive actions on climate change. An electric car, especially when you recharge it with renewable energies, is a step closer to a better future for our planet. Spectacular stuff, and who knew that Denmark was such a surfing hotspot? Or should I say, cold spot? <laughs> but let's get, is there actually decent surfing in Denmark? Uh, well, actually, there's a place just near where we've been. It's called Cold Hawaii. <laughs> I think I'd still prefer hot Hawaii. Um, anyway, I've owned lots of station wagons over the years, but I've got to say the ET5 Touring has more useful features than most of them put together. I've seen how Valeska used them. I'm keen to find out for myself, and Philip is back to show me around. So Philip, are there any aspects to the interior here that um, speak to you on a personal level for your lifestyle? Well, maybe you caught by my accent, I'm Austrian, so natural, love skiing. And what we have in the ET5 Touring is that 40-20-40 split. So the middle falls right down, I get four pairs of ski in there, grab three of my friends, we're good to go for a nice ski trip. That's fantastic. So it's really versatile space. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's the whole idea of a station wagon, right? You maybe start your own family, you want a little bit more of space, you want camping trips, holidays, pets, a trip to Ikea maybe, and you just need that extra bit of versatility. So for that, we got double air floor in here to get even more space, for the second row flat to get more space, and if you even need more space, you also got some roof wells on top. Awesome. Any other special gadgets? And we have the one side, we have this really nice hook up here. Oh cool, I like that. It's like a, so it's like your own personal dressing room. You can hang your wetsuit up. Something like that, and there's one thing I think you've never seen before, and it's right on this side here. It's a portable flashlight. It pops right out. I love it, because whenever you go somewhere, you always leave something behind, especially in the dark, but not when you've got one of these. Never. Um, so that's great, so I'll keep that. <laughs> so it's all properly useful stuff, but if you ask me, practicality is nothing without performance. Thankfully, the Touring has a few tricks up its sleeve in that department, including transformers like battery technology, which has to be seen to be believed. And to find out more, I've been on an action-packed road trip starting in the heart of the Netherlands. Well, it doesn't get much more Dutch than this. We're here in Lockham, 130 kilometers away from Amsterdam in the east of the Netherlands. And over there in Germany, 400 kilometers away, it's one of my all-time favorite automotive playgrounds. And it's not the Nürburgring. Now, I've got the car, the snacks. All I need is a good co-pilot. And fortunately, I know just the guy. This is Danilo, Neo's chief engineer, and it's his job to make sure this car puts a smile on people's faces. I'm already smiling, so I'm really looking forward to this. Danilo, are you ready to rock? Yeah, sure. Right. Let's do this. Can you tell me a bit more about this car though? All Neo vehicles come with all-wheel drive, that's standard. It's got two electric motors, yeah. um, but what's the power split front to rear? So yeah, any, any Neo car has a dual motor layout. Uh, in this car we have 210 kilowatt in the rear uh, and 150 kilowatt in the front. And the overall torque, which is the most fun part, is uh, 7,000 newton meter at the wheels. So all that tech is fantastic, but there's one thing I'm really excited about with this car because the way it charges is unlike any other electric car in the world, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, we have something very special there and you're gonna like it. Okay, looking forward to it. Now this is what you call a charging station. Of course, you can charge your Neo at home or using one of the regular rapid chargers, but this is one of Neo's power swap stations and it's gonna replace our spent battery with a fresh, fully charged battery. And all we've got to do is reserve one, rock up and let the magic happen. And the car will even drive itself in there in autonomous mode, which is fine by me. So we're being aligned, and then the machinery inspects the floor, checks the battery as well, the one that's coming off, where it goes underneath. Oh, and we're off. 
the robots are removing our battery and replacing it with a new one using laser guided bolts. It's like something from a Transformers movie. Yeah, indeed. It's really cool. How long is this going to take? Well, the whole process will take uh, five minutes, okay. which obviously is way faster than plugging and charging. And yeah, it's time for a coffee, you know? Barely time for a coffee. And the great thing is you don't have to get out of the car, haven't got to get your hands dirty at a fuel pump, so it's pretty clean and easy. Down we go. Now we have the new battery in, the system will need to reboot. Yep. And as soon as it's ready, we will have the green light, and off we go. So, Danilo, how many of these swap stations are there? We have uh, nearly 1,500, and we are adding week by week. And uh, the good part of it, of this network, if we can actually uh, have the opportunity to upgrade your battery. Okay, so you could come in here and drive out with a bigger capacity battery than what you came in with. Exactly, it's what happened now. Basically, we came in with the 75 kilowatt hour. We will go out with the 100 kilowatt hour. Uh, soon we will release the 150 kilowatt hour in China and later on in Europe for a very long range. So if you translate that into combustion terms, we're basically driving out of here with a bigger capacity fuel tank. With the EV, the more energy your battery can hold, the longer your range. So what range have we got now? So with 100 kilowatt hour battery, we can go up to 560 kilometer in WLTP. Yeah, green light, awesome. Oh, yeah. So we're off. So 560, that's enough to go from London to Paris and do a few laps of Paris. Well, it depends how you drive. What do you mean? Yeah. Ah! <laughs> this is the formidable Bilsterberg circuit, deep in the forests of German Westphalia and once a secret test facility, this 4.2 kilometer roller coaster of a racetrack designed by Hermann Tilke is the perfect place to let the ET5 touring off the leash. All right, cool. So I'm going to put it into Sport Plus mode. Yep. And so with the two electric motors, we've got the equivalent of 480 brake horsepower that's going to send us down the track to 100 kilometers an hour in four seconds. That's like supercar speed. Right. I, I really guess you, you can beat that time. You think? You better hang on then. All right. All right, here we go. go. Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's like spaceship acceleration. The first thing I noticed at the first corner was the really good rotation. I'm guessing that that's partly coming because you've got 50-50 weight distribution, so yeah. you equal amount of weight on the front axle, equal weight on the rear, and that means you can manipulate the car in with the steering. The center of gravity is very, very low, so the battery packs right in the floor there. You don't notice any sudden weight transfers. It's all very predictable, and the car feels planted. You can anticipate what's happening. Good weight distribution, very low center of gravity. Also the white tracks with help to the stability of the car. Yeah. And also it's a very high rollover resistance coefficient. So you can maybe dare a little bit more in driving. Oh, can I? Eh, I mean, that sounds like a challenge if ever I heard one. <laughs> this, this corner is something else. <laughs> <laughs> I love that instant hit you get. The torque just goes straight through the motors uh, into the back wheels. You can feel it squat with the front also pulling us through the corner. And you also have five link suspension on the front and the rear, which is actually unusual in a car in this class. That's quite sophisticated advanced engineering and means that the suspension can absorb forces in multiple directions. It also tends to smooth out the ride and handling. I mean, that's quite impressive. You need to have a lot of rigidity as well from the body white. We've been using hybrid materials between steel for the cabin area where you don't want any deformation also in case of a crash. But then we are using also aluminum for the lightweight, which is also important for the acceleration and all the dynamics. And then we use the mega casting, especially in the rear, which give us a very rigid rear end. So also in the, in the weight transfers as well mentioned before. Because effectively the, the chassis twists, so it's great to have a car like this with a high grip level, but the, the chassis has to take that load and there is an element of twist and you want that because it helps the weight transfer, but you don't want too much. So that's why you're building in the hybrid components. Yeah, exactly. So 
So we're getting a lot of tyres. We're already working these tyres and these compressions, but the suspension's really taking it well. I mean, performance is something you've obviously built into this car and you've got that in your background. 2015, I know you guys won the Drivers' Championship in Formula E. Um, and you, of course, you developed the EP9, which is yeah. one of the world's fastest electric cars. So it's, I guess it's part of your mindset. It is. We pay a lot of attention to that. We're very happy to beat the Nürburgring record back in 2017 yeah. with the EP9. And then the EP9 become also a development tool, if you want, because we were also using it on uh, autonomous drive development. We, we are beating records in multiple circuits without the driver on board. But I guess we are having more fun now. Right? I'm glad that this is not in autonomous mode. I'm very happy at the wheel and really making the most of this. Fantastic. I mean, we're in Sport Plus, which is the most, if you like, aggressive performance mode, but uh, there's nine modes, is that right, in total, yeah, so you can yeah. vary it? You can go from uh, Eco Plus, which of course is useful when you are on low distance and uh, you want to take care of your range, yeah. all the way to Sport Plus, and in between we have modes for, for special events like sand, snow, mud, yeah. and so to, yeah, to give as much assist, as much uh, personalization as possible to our users. So it's versatile. Yeah, it is. It's really fun. I mean, there's a lot of energy here in the track, and I've also noticed that you can really hit the brakes, and the stopping power is really aggressive, which is great on this track, because there's a lot of points squared. Yeah, it is. We, we have developed in that in-house, in the front caliper, four-piston, single-cast aluminum, just to control the weight as much as we can. Total stopping distance is below 34 meters. Which is extremely short. Which is, yeah, which yeah. is a supercar performance, I would say. <laughs> I'm recording you, the passenger. Um, that was a lot of fun, at least for me. I'm not sure so much for you. I mean, have you recovered yet? It was great fun, and thank you for driving me around. It was my pleasure. Thanks for explaining all the technical side. And for me, the real standout breakthrough is the battery swapping. So congratulations for such a bold invention. Thank you. Speaking of clever stuff, we're going to take a trip across now to China for a special Neo science lesson. Hello, 大家好，我是未来产品体验负责人 Ted。好，各位好，我是影视飓风的 CEO Tim， 也是未来一体七的车主。我们是 TNT 组合。<笑>其实说白了，今天应该是一个三 T 组合。为什么呢？因为现在我握着这辆车是未来 ET5 的 Touring 版本。真的是非常非常帅的一辆车，从从外面来看，这个外观真的是我非常喜欢的一个车型。Tim， 今天你将是第一个体验到 ET5 旅行版的人，<笑>我感到非常荣幸，但是我迫不及待的想去试一试它更多的功能。好，我们出发，出发。Tim， 这个作为一个科技圈的顶流博主，在开始今天 ET5 旅行版的智能体验介绍之前。你觉得对于一个旅行版车辆来说的话，什么是对它最重要的一个场景？拖挂车、拖挂模式、露营模式，然后这个下车不断电，啊，这些其实基本上都是一个旅行版的车子需要有的功能。其实今天我们对于 ET5 旅行版的一个使用体验，通过斑眼智能系统进行了更多的，不止于这些功能的优化。比如说长途体验之下的话，我们今天的换电站的搜索、领航的体验也会大幅度的提升和改进。今天也为你准备了一个小小的彩蛋。你可以试着用你的两个手指双击一下我们的中控屏，就是这样吗？对，现在你就可以看到，在地图上面撒出了我们所有周边可以显示到的这个换电站的图层。平时你对 Nomi 的反馈如何？我个人非常喜欢，因为它不像是别的那种交互助手一样，只是冷冰冰的给你一个回答。就我一直以为它这个屏幕是一个黑白屏。直到有一天，我发现他拿出一个红包，结发现是彩屏。对，我发现是彩屏，然后我惊呆了，这个给我的惊喜就特别特别大。表情一直以来都是我们的用户，特别是小朋友们啊，特别喜欢的一个东西。前面一个是送小朋友的，这个呢，我们送给大人。Hi Nomi， 我在，帮我打开日历。好的。哇、哦，还有日历，它是可以和我的手机同步的吗？是的，接下来的话呢，我们会让它通过 New 的 App 和大家的手机进行同步。嗯、要么你来试一试 Nomi 最新的一个能力。OK， Hi Nomi， 在呢。给我设置一个晚上九点的提醒，告诉我我需要去公司。好的，我会在晚上九点提醒。你看，<笑>现在跟 Nomi 说话其实变得更加的方便了，它就像是你车内的一个大管家一样，能够帮你一句话办很多事儿。很像是一个贾维斯的现实版， okay. 因为它有个实体，然后它更像是一个 Chat GPT 的可爱智能实体版。
除了 Nomi 之外的话，还有什么功能是你平时最常用的？我觉得必须是 NOP Plus 增强辅助驾驶，这个对我来说实在是太有用了。就平常的话，我现在上高速或者高架，我自己实际参与驾驶的部分非常之少，基本都是 NOP Plus 来帮我完成。那其实跟我们很多车主都非常像了。上次有一个车主，我记得他跟我说，春节的时候从东北一路 N O P Plus 到了三亚，这都能够完成吗？就相当于基本上没有什么人工的介入，全部由 N O P Plus 来帮助他完成。这个今天的 N O P Plus 领航辅助，它在感知周围的这个车辆的时候，不光会感知前向的、侧向的，甚至于从后方快速插入的这样的一些车辆，它也可以提前进行预判。你注意看它的这个视觉感知，这辆车它有夹塞意图的时候，我们就会用蓝色把它的左半侧车身高亮起来，这个时候就代表我们的 NOP Plus 已经识别到了这辆车有夹塞的意图。对，然后它真的很像是一个老司机，你会发现就是它非常顺滑的可以完成变道，还有各种操作，就好像是一个人在驾驶。今天我们把 ET5 旅行版带到了一个标准的城区路况，来让你感受一下最新的城区 BEV 模型。这也太多了，又是人，又是巴士，又是自行车，又是那些全部塞满。但是我最震撼的是眼前所有的东西都被重建出来了。是的，是的，而且除了这些这些目标以外的话，像我们路边的这个马路的边缘路基，都可以基于这套 BEV 的感知模型全面的显示出来。那接下来泰德，你们有什么规划吗？我们从今天开始的 NOP Plus 就已经用上了 BEV 以及它背后的这样一个基于大模型的端到端的一个决策。规划和控制的体系了，这也是刚才你看到了，在我们桥上的这一段 NOP Plus 的体验中，其实它会更像老司机，但它会非常熟练的在进行各种操作，就完全没有机械的味道。所以实现熟练的操作的前提是你要有一个非常精准的全面的感知能力。那接下来 NAD 是会同步在欧洲，呃，也会发布吗？呃，其实，在欧洲的话，由于它的一个基础设施、嗯、法律法规还有研发进度的不同，那么今年呢，我们会首先还是在中国，我们会在 Q3 开始进行 NAD 城区 Beta 的这样一个功能的领航和早鸟计划。那么欧洲的话呢，它的 NOP Plus 和 NAD 的功能，我们会接下来呢在欧洲专门组织跟大家的沟通和交流。在班业 2.0 上面，我们还推出了一个新的东西，这个你之前应该也知道，就是这个 Unbox。啊、哦，那个 AI 眼镜，这个其实是去年发布的这个 AI 眼镜，那时候我已经有些认知了。那今天通过 Unbox， 实际上一辆车可以同时支持四路的 AI 眼镜的一线直连输出，所以逻辑上只要一根线，就是每个人都是一根线，然后车上四个人都可以享受到这个 AI 的。对的，接下来的话呢，你应该比较熟悉了，这个是 Switch， 这个我认识。好 ，Unbox 还会支持到一个它的一个输入，也就是 DP in。有了 DPN 以后的话，在有 Unbox 的车型里边，你就可以把所有你想得到的这种游戏设备，只要支持 DPN 的，都可以往这个里面一放，这样就可以通过车辆原声输出它的一个实时的一个内容，而且可以用它的手柄来进行有娱乐。我今天还是真的是把，你看啊，我把我的手柄也准备起来了。这个时候如果车内你能够听到这个音频就好了。其实你面前现在就有个很大的屏幕，对吧？是这样的，现在我眼睛里边显示的内容，它是一个投影在。六米之外的一个两百零一寸的大屏，而且它是跟整个车的这个车舱相对固定的。这个时候，其实我眼睛头从这边移开了以后，我能看到的是你的人啊、哦，它并不会跟着你的眼睛跑过来，它并不会跟着我的空间定位的。没错，没错，相当于它在虚拟空间之中就固定在了前方，像一个巨型的影院一样。我们接下来的这个功能推出，在国内和欧洲也会有一个分布推出的一个过程。体验了这么多 ET 五旅行版的智能体验。能不能帮我们总结出几个关键词来形容一下？我首先先说一个词的话是带劲，那我说三个词的话就是好开、好玩、好智能。那好开的话，今天我觉得无论这辆车本身的驾驶体验，还是 NOP Plus 都让我印象深刻。而且之后的 NAD， 这我觉得也应该离我们非常近，我非常期待它的落地。嗯、然后好玩的话。那我觉得今天的 AR 和 Unbox 这两个本身也让我看到它的可能性，嗯、能够看到这个巨大的屏幕，然后每个人都有一个独享的空间，没错，就是、别的车所很少能有的一个体验。然后最后的话就是好智能，今天我看到了一个智能和人文关怀结合的这么一颗优秀的系统、嗯，那我觉得这是非常特别的一点，它有着它的温度，又有着它非常便携各种智能的功能，被非常良好的结合到了一起。所以从这里我也能够看到未来的这种为用户思考的这种底蕴吧。所以你觉得对这个接下来 ET5 旅行版有什么样的期待吗？哇，我真的心动了。实话说，这可能就是我要说的唯一一个词，就是我真的很心动。好的，非常感谢 Tim， 我们相信 ET5 旅行版会一定不负期待。
Ted, you look like you're having a lot of fun and you were really rocking those AR glasses. Thanks a lot. <laughs> what is it that makes you most proud about the ET5 Touring? The first definitely is design. ET5 Touring really sets itself apart from a typical station wagon. It is elegant yet poised. It balances between beauty and utility. And also those iconic watchtower sensor layout design is really unique and progressive. And secondly, of course, is performance. With the EP9 high performance jeans in itself, the ET5 Touring really is already a four second club member. And with a single driver, you can do it in three. And lastly, I think, is the smart mobile living space where it blends the latest technology with human design that it actually makes it creating a unique atmosphere for each journey, joyful. And with the Banyan system, it will be the most competitive and powerful computing platform for smart cockpit and intelligent driving. Fantastic. So for people who are watching who want to buy one of these cars, how do they get their hands on one? Okay. So the ET5 Touring will be available in Germany, Denmark, the Netherlands, Norway, and Sweden. If you're interested, you can make a reservation online today. ET5 Touring comes with two battery options, 75 kilowatt hour as the standard range and 100 kilowatt hour as the long range. You can choose the battery capacity according to your needs. In addition, to the buying option. You can also subscribe to the ET5 Touring for better flexibility, as we believe that flexibility is the new premium. We also offer battery as a service, BAS. It means you can own a car while leasing the battery. BAS lowers the initial purchase cost for users and offers the battery as a real energy service, allowing the unique battery swap experience and the possibility of switching to a different battery capacity on demand. From now till July 31st, users who have made a reservation online will get a complimentary comfort package, which includes front seat power cushion adjustment, front seat ventilation and massage, steering wheel heating, rear seat heating, and smart fragrance with ionizers. Journey ahead. I really look forward to you experiencing the ET5 Touring. Now, I would like to invite Ben, our audience and presenters, to take a closer look at the ET5 Touring. Welcome. So that's it for our whirlwind tour of the world from Scandinavia to Shanghai, from science to surfing. We've covered it all and seen what the ET5 Touring is really all about. Smooth styling, pure electric speed, clever functionality and groundbreaking technology, all wrapped up in a station wagon. What more could you ask for? Thank you to our contributors for your awesome films and to the Neo experts for explaining the technology and to you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Goodbye.